Welcome to election 2013 coverage of the candidates. Uh, this time we have uh, the ward race and ward one for city council. With me is my broadcast partner, Ron Van Dam, WXBR and Brockton Community Access. Welcome, gentlemen. I will uh, start with opening statements. Uh, we said in the letter, and I know we didn't do a draw or anything, so we'll, we'll start you uh, with opening statement from Tom first, and then we'll reverse them for closing statement. So um, if... Tom, you want to start and do your minute, and if uh, if you uh, get a me waving at you, that means uh, okay. that means you're done. Go ahead, one minute. Um, I'd like to say first that I'm not a polished speaker, so uh, it's just kind of tough. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Tom Siddell, and I'm a lifelong resident of Brockton and a hardworking Brockton business owner with a vested interest in the city of Brockton. My wife Deborah and I got married in 2007 and have two children. Our daughter Martha, who is four and a half, and our son Constantinos, who is two and a half. I've been watching closely at the direction that our city is heading, and after witnessing my good friend Dr. Greg Miller get elected as Ward 1 Councilor back in 2003, I too thought that I could make the same difference. I believe that we can do better than it is now being offered. We will have ward meetings on a monthly basis to talk about the issues that we are concerned about and we'll have total transparency of all city finances and we'll open the books to all taxpayers. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, first off, I want to thank uh, Ron Van Dam and WXBI Radio and Mark Lindy and Brockton Community Access for hosting this forum. And I also want to thank my opponent for uh, stepping forward and uh, getting involved in the discussions that we need to move the city forward. It's not an easy thing to do. I'd especially like to thank the people of Ward 1 for the confidence that they've shown in me for these past eight years. I'm very proud of how Brockton has weathered these last eight years, coming through the worst economic downturn that this country has seen since the Great Depression. As we move out of this downturn and into an improving economy, it is time for the city to start to commit to the improvements and programs needed to expand the tax base, attract new businesses, and continue to make Brockton a safe, vibrant place that we can proudly call our home. Thank you. Okay, you guys both were under 60 seconds. That's fine. I'll allow for more questions. First question up is uh, from Ron. Do you have any specific issue that you feel needs to be addressed after this election? Uh, something that you want to make a, a mark on? And we'll start with Tim. Uh, well, yeah, actually, and in fact, I'll probably be filing a resolve uh, shortly to uh, one of the places we've wasted some money, uh, the opportunity for some money recently, is I'd like to... Uh, file a resolve to bring in uh, a discussion about the Com Community Preservation Act, which was enacted by the state years ago and was not a good fit for what Brockton needed at the time. The Community Preservation Act is a tax on real estate uh, transactions. The state uh, currently collects those transactions, and in most years, we in Brockton have lost out on about $800,000 in money that we could have had. Now, we can only have that if we accept the Community Preservation Act, and uh, originally the act was only for... Uh, improving low-income housing, which Brockton doesn't need any more of, and for uh, purchasing large tracts of open space. We don't really have the uh, ability for that. So uh, I will be bringing a resolve forward to uh, see if that fits for Brockton now and what you can use that money actually for improving our playgrounds. Tom, same question. Could you just repeat the question one more time? Yes. Uh, once this election process is over and you're in a seat, uh, is there something that one issue that you want to attack immediately as counselor? Well, uh, to start, I mean, we're spending six million dollars a year on the desalination plant and not getting a drop of water in return. So that's a big issue with me, and that's something that I would like to start on. Uh, we're spending another one million dollars a year uh, paying for the Brockton Walk. Uh, spending another one million dollars a year paying for the Brockton Rocks water and electric bills through that. Um, through the, uh, yeah, uh, we're, we're, we are spending another $1 million a year paying for the Brockton Walks water and electric bills and letting Stonehill get away with not paying us millions of dollars for using our sewer resources. So that's something that I would like to jump into. Okay, um, so I'll do a follow-up to your question. Sure. Um, do you want... I'm, I'm going to ask you both if you want to elaborate on that. That's been an issue that's been in the news, been in the newspaper. It's been discussed forever at City Council and for the last three election cycles that I can think of. 
Uh, Tim, why don't I? We're gonna go back. You know, I'll, when, when he finishes the last one, you get the next one, and vice versa. Sure, and elaborate on. Actually, yeah. like to elaborate on the issues that uh, obviously Mr. Sedell has talked about, and there are issues that have been brought up many times. The uh, desalinization contract is a very frustrating thing. We're paying six million dollars for water that we're not using for just the ability to get to that water. Contract that was forced on us by the state years ago, before this current council was there, before I was there. Uh, but again, there is one upside to having that desalinization plant. And the problem is, until that, we've only had the uh, one source, major source of water. We did have a small backup with the Avon uh, Reservoir, but really very little backup water. If there was ever a catastrophic issue, we would, be, would have had no access to, to water for fire protection, or, or in effect long term for actual drinking water. So uh, the, the key on the desal plant is do we buy the plant down the road? And again, if that number can be made pro proper, it's probably the right thing for us to do because we are going to need that water at some point. It's very frustrating right now, but it is a, a contract that previous administrations entered into, and there's not much we can do about that. Um, the other two, obviously, the Stonehill contract, again, goes back to the 1960s. It's up in three years. Stonehill has been made aware and is in negotiations with the mayor's office, something we can't, we don't do the negotiations on the council, but I think they've been made aware from this council anyways, and who knows what the future councils will be looking at, that when that contract is up, they will have no sweetheart deal like it is now, and so the, it behooves them to negotiate now, and, uh, and I think you will see some some changes to that contract in the near term, but uh, in the long term, they will not have any kind of sweetheart deal that will go through at least the council that I would sit on. Okay, I'm going to let you go a minute 45 on that uh, mm -hmm. because it's an important issue. It, it brings a lot of issues together. Well, the desal plant is not cost effective, and um, I'm not even sure that they can actually deliver the three million gallons of water that they say that they can deliver. Um, it would be about 18 times more costly than Silver Ridge Regional, who's our current water supply. Um, and as far as, as far as the Stonehill College uh, sewer contract deal, uh, my incumbent has recused himself many times from negotiating on it because uh, his son was a student there. And uh, I think that the, he could have been a little bit more in tune with the city of Brockton and representing us a lot better previous times uh, in, in getting this done. Still have more time? More time. Do you want any more? Or you... That's, I'm fine with that. Okay. Um, uh, just the only thing I'd like to say, to the just the only thing I'd like to say is, and there's often misconceptions out there, the city council does not do the negotiations. We don't negotiate, the, uh, the executive branch does. In towns, the executive branch and a board of selectmen is your legislative branch and your executive branch. We don't negotiate those contracts. We don't negotiate contracts, period. And in fact, in many cases, we don't even approve contracts unless they have a financial aspect to them. So we don't do the negotiations, but we would have to accept this contract in the future, and it would never be accepted as is, as it is today. In my vote would not be. I can't say the whole council, but thank you. Um, I'm going to ask a question now, bro. Communication, I'm in the communication business. Mm -hmm. uh, cable is one of the outlets in Brockton. Radio station is, newspaper is. Um, would you, in, in terms of communicating with your constituents, how would you seek to do that um, being the new kid on the block? And uh, the question to Councilor Cruz is how would you continue to do that? So I'll start with Tom. Well, um, one thing I have done is I have already registered on the back of my pamphlet the uh, domain names ward1brockton.com and .org and ward the number one brockton.com and .org and I'm going to have a ward1 website where I can update all the issues constantly. I'll have a live blog and a forum where people can get involved and talk about what's going on in the city of Brockton. Um, I will have Ward one meetings um, on a monthly basis, and we'll talk to the constituents and uh, get get to know what they want and what I want, and we can all congregate it, put it together, and uh, and 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 try to make an effort, a strong effort at City Hall. Um, I've also uh, registered. Uh, actually, I, I put a, a phone. I got a phone from Verizon uh, specifically just for the campaign and for my candidacy when I do become elected as Ward 1 Councillor. And um, 
I will call back within 24 hours for sure, if not answer the call. And uh, my constituents are number one, and I will positively be there for them 100%. Thank you. Minute 15. Thank you. Uh, it actually, uh, when I first got elected, uh, and I don't want to say it was a long time ago, but the uh, uh, website was not something as, as needed as much. It is needed now, and in fact, I, would, I don't know what domain names are still available, but if, I'm, if I am re-elected, I will be starting a, uh, a, you know, a, a website where people can contact. But uh, people have my home phone number. It's in the phone book. I answer that. I don't even have a caller ID at my house. We answer the phone. People oftentimes say, oh, is this your sec I thought your secretary would answer. We don't have secretaries. I answer that phone and I get back to people. Uh, and as far as ward meetings, to be honest with you, I used to have three a year. And in this last year and a half, I haven't because the same ten people came to every ward meeting. And one of the things people don't realize about ward meetings, I have had many neighborhood meetings. When there's an issue, I'm there. And in fact, those neighbors will, uh, will attest to that. But... Uh, as far as the ward meetings, they can be very expensive for the city. Uh, when uh, lots of councilors have these ward meetings, people don't realize that when those police officers are there and fire uh, people are brought in to talk to the neighbors, they're all on overtime, and it gets very expensive. And in fact, Chief Conlon, when he was still a chief, at one point had sent out a request near the end of the fiscal year, could we please be judicious on those because uh, he had no overtime money left. I'd rather see that overtime money being spent putting officers on the street. but. Uh, I will have a. I will be starting a uh, website, and again, we'll have to find out what domain names are not available, uh, are still available. And if not, I'll talk to Mr. Sedell if I'm elected, and, and perhaps purchase one of those and take over the uh, payments for it. So, thank you. I think it, I think it'll cost you. Um, anyway, um, something that won't cost anybody anything. I do this pitch every two years. I've done it with the three school committee races. I'll do it again. You guys are getting tired of hearing me. There's a government channel and a school channel for the school committee. That would make be an avenue for the government. And I know Tim has been on the channel before. Would you use, um, we, we talked about new technology being the web, would you use a current technology that exists, both uh, the radio station, which XBR has people on all the time, or cable? Uh, Tom? Um, yes, I, I, I would use a uh, open line of communication being uh, radio and cable, even though I have such a very hard time, as you can see. But I'll get used to it. And um, I, I, I would like, like to use those. If they're, they're available to me, I'd like to use them to reach out to the people. Um, like I said, the, uh, the, the Ward 1 website is going to be a very, very, very big hit. And uh, people are already getting involved. Um, and, and that's mainstream technology that everybody's using right now. But definitely, I would be using cable and, uh, and um, cable and... Um, and radio, yes, cable and radio, uh, yes. Okay, Tim. Yeah, absolutely. In effect, I know I've been on Ron's show, and I've told him. I said people need to be careful what they wish for. Lots of people in politics used to say, "Oh, the enterprise was awful, and the radio was awful." Well, in in the absence of news gathering opportunities, uh, poor information tends to get out there, especially in the age of the internet. Everybody gets to say what they want, oftentimes anonymously, and. Uh, uh, it's really great to have XBR back. Cable, you know, I have used with you very often before. And uh, even though the newspaper business is a changing industry, it's, uh, uh, it's important for the city. And I would hope that the enterprise actually does a better job of covering what goes on at the city council. Many of our meetings, they don't have any press there. And it's, uh, that's a shame. And I know it's a difficult thing because it's a business. But uh, it's really important that, again, that XBR is back and that Ron's doing his show in the morning and... Uh, and he's been great to work with. In fact, I've been able to come in at off hours with him and do, do an interview and, and uh, love to do more of that because, uh, again, everybody doesn't have cable, you know, and so you have to use every different means that you can to get the word out. Thank you. Ron? There's two uh, camps in the financial status of the city. One is that uh, through increased property tax, we don't know the percentage, that the city is very solvent, that even during a second only to the Depression period of time, the city has a very high bond rating, very financially well set. Uh, other side of the coin is the opposite, that that's, uh, we're, we're taking money out of the pockets of the citizens and such. Which is, which is the story to you? Is it better to have a city that is extremely solvent, 
or a city on the other side that uh, isn't as solvent but spends more money for services, et cetera? Uh, well, like, extremely solvent. I don't know if I'd go that far. Every year, it's a uh, it, it's frightening when it gets down to doing getting ready to do the budget. And uh, I think there's more two thoughts out there of whether there's more money available than 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 uh, seems to be. Um, there is a group out there that says there's plenty of money out there. We don't need to to raise any taxes. Well, the the city budget is overseen by the Department of Revenue, and I don't understand why anybody would think that the city would try to hide money. We're all taxpayers also, and it makes no sense at all to me. Um, most people see that, that money that's there and see their tax bills, and what they really want is some return on the investment for what they, we're getting. I think we oftentimes, in effect, when you do the council at large races, it's a different thing. I represent the people of Ward 1. I'll be at different events, and some other council would say, how come you didn't do this or that? Because I represent Ward 1. I don't represent Ward 7 or Ward 6 or Ward 4. I represent the people of Ward 1. They understand that the short-term gains of, of some of the tax cuts and all would be offset by higher costs long-term. Uh, one of the things that you, when you say very solvent, um, it's really very conservative budgeting is what it is. And uh, it's very important that a city does this does it that way. For us to have used some of the money that uh, the stabilization fund or anything to, to fund a tax cut would be very, it, it'd be easy and it would get you lots of votes short term, but it's a difficult and, and in the long term a poor decision in, in my opinion because it, it gives, it's too much pain down the road for what we would get gain out of that. Well, I just want to say that we have the 20th highest commercial tax rate in the state out of 342 communities, and also the 78th highest residential tax rate out of 342 communities across the state. Uh, we're paying $114 million a year this year in real estate taxes, which is a third of the, our city budget revenues. Yet our streets, our parks, and downtown are run down, and our crime rate is increasing at an alarming rate. Uh, we are spending six million dollars a year on a desal plant and not getting a drop of water in return like I said before and uh, in, in my estimation we can't sustain this tax burden any longer um, when our average combined family income in the city is only forty six thousand dollars per uh, year coincidentally the average income for families receiving state aid and I, I believe that we can lower the commercial tax rate in the city to bring more business and commerce into the city and we can grow our tax base that way so that all the money that we're looking for uh, for resident you know for, for, for everything in the city we can actually get by by lowering our, ta our commercial tax base and taking in more business and uh, we can generate more revenue and get more taxes and, and, and that will take the burden off the residential taxpayer okay Two different approaches. Any any follow up? With well, I would just like to say I totally agree with uh, with Tom on the uh, commercial tax rate. In fact, anybody who's followed the uh, tax rate hearings for the last three or four years knows that I've led the charge to try and drop the commercial tax rate because even though there'd be some short term pain for the residential taxpayer, we need to attract businesses, and that's the only way to to eventually drop the burden on the homeowner. Okay, follow up. Oh, okay. Um, is the next question mine or yours, Ron? I think it's yours. Okay. Um, I guess I'll ask the question, and I'll phrase it differently, because obviously one of you is an incumbent and one of you is a challenger. What prompted you, Tom, to get in this race? What's the reason that you're running for Ward 1 City Councilor? You, from my understanding, you've never been involved in city politics before. No. Um, I've never been involved in city politics, and uh, I just, I've gone to tax hearings uh, at, at City Hall and spoken, and it just seems to go everybody, over everybody's head. Um, I get uh, fed up with everything that's going on, and I figured that this is my chance to get in and try to change uh, things the way that I would want to see them, the way that constituents would want to see them. I, I get a lot of people at the liquor store coming in saying, well, you know, you have a lot of great ideas about everything. Why don't you run for office? And I'm like, well, I don't know if, you know, if I really have it in me to run for office. 
Uh, and uh, Dick Sicaro ended up coming into my liquor store and uh, prompted me to uh, get involved. So I, <clears throat> I became involved in the BLT, the Brocktonians for Limited Taxation, uh, for a very short time um, before deciding to actually run. And uh, the limited taxation, you know, it's a group of, uh, you know, Democrats and Republicans all together. Um, combined together to, for a common cause, to lower the taxes on the city. And I feel that there are a lot of uh, different ways that we can go about lowering the taxes in the city, like I said, the commercial tax rate. And uh, while we're paying $32 a year, I mean, it's, it's really, really high. And uh, we're strangulating the businesses in the city that are trying to make it. And we're shutting the doors uh, to our city for, for businesses looking to come into our city. They're going to Avon, they're going to uh, Stoughton, they're going to Easton instead, who have a, have a much lower commercial rate. And um, I don't like what the current administration is doing. And I feel that I, feel that I can bring a lot to the table um, as far as uh, business is concerned. I, I run a business, uh, I own a business and run a business in the city since 1999. And I really feel that I can make a positive, positive difference. Okay. Two, two minutes, Tim. Why do you want to stay and be a city councilor in tough economic times? Well, I think one of the things I'm proudest of is my leadership and maturity at the city council. Uh, you know, we are looking at our federal government right now where one side won't even talk to the other. They don't have any interest in, uh, in trying to find compromise and common ground. Uh, I think it's important that I stay there. And let me tell you, it's, uh, I thought very long and hard about whether I wanted to come back. It's very frustrating. It's very time consuming. And by the way, I give you a lot of credit. Deciding to run is not easy. And it takes time away from your family. And it's a difficult thing to do. It's a difficult job to do. But uh, I think it's important. I love the city. I could have left any time. Any one of us could have. I love Brockton. I'm still here. I've raised three children here with two that are out of college and went through the Brockton school system and I still have a sophomore at the high school and uh, I love, love being here and realize to solve some of these difficult issues it takes, takes people with, uh, with thoughts and with uh, the courage to stand up and make some of those difficult votes. Okay, I'm going to just do a follow-up on that one since we're, we are talking about time. Um, we were talking about that with the school committee candidates earlier. They have committees and subcommittees just like the city council does. The only thing they have extra that you guys don't have is PTO meetings and PACs, although as parents, I'm sure you're involved in those too. Um, Tom, you're a, you're a business owner. You, you, you own the business, so you're there more than full-time, I would think. If yeah. you're the owner, you don't get to take a vacation and, and leave. Yeah. Do you have time to be a city councilor with a, a family and a, a business? Um, I do. I have people that work for me, and uh, I'll have to hire some more people to work for me uh, because the cause that I see is more important. Um, not saying that it's more important than my business, but my business is established. My business is going to run itself. Um, I really don't have to. I have to pay attention to it, but I do have employees. And... I feel that I can, I feel that I have a lot that I can offer to you and a lot that I can do for you. And I feel that uh, I have a lot of good ideas. Um, I can bring a lot of my business expertise into the uh, city council. I understand budgeting. I've been going over the budgets uh, for city council, which is one big budget. And uh, I, I do feel that I can do a lot for it. And yes, I will have the time to do it. Um, I don't think I'd be taking away from anything per pertinent. Uh, my family is behind me 100%. Uh, my my in-laws, my parents, uh, everybody is totally behind me. I, it's, they, they believe in me also, that I can really, really make a change. And I really, really, really want to make that change. Okay, Tim. Um Similar question. I mean, you're you're already in the position, and you've done some of the juggling. Does it get difficult? And are, are you looking forward to more of it? Uh, it certainly gets difficult, but uh, uh, part of the reason you do it, and in fact, and I'm sure Tom would be able to make the time. You do it because I I think almost anybody in politics, as much as there's plenty of people in the public that like to be cynical and may not 
believe this, almost anybody that gets into, into politics, particularly local politics, does it for the right reasons. They do it because they want to see their city or town be a better place. We can have differences of opinion on how to get there, but I don't question anybody's commitment on why they're there. Um, you know, part of the reason I do put the time in, and it does, it takes a lot of time away from your family. But as a matter of fact, I'm very proud of the, what my children have learned from me giving to the city. And they've learned that it's important to be part of a community, whatever that community is. And I'm not talking just necessarily your city or your town. But whatever community it is, it's important to give back and be part of it. And so is it difficult? Absolutely. And there are times it's very difficult. But uh, um, you make the time, and again, and I know Tom would also. It's just you do it because it's the right thing to do. Okay, believe it or not, I told you guys a half an hour goes very quickly. So we're at the end pretty close to the half an hour. So what we're going to do in order to get the statements in, the two-minute closing statements, anything we didn't cover, anything you want to say, you can wrap it right into your closing statement. So I believe we uh, had... Um, I believe Tom... Do you have a question for me? No, no, it's not a question. It's, oh, it's, a it's question. the closing. We oh, it's the closing. It was the closing. It okay. did go by fast. Yeah. So then, so wow, that went by already? It did Tim went by what? fast. Tim is first. Tim is first. Thank you. Two minutes. Again, I'd like to thank WXBR and Brockton Community Access for, ho Access for hosting this forum. I want to thank Tom for joining in the debate over the future direction that we take. And to the people of Ward 1, I'm very proud of the work that I've done in my almost eight years as your representative of the Brockton City Council. With two children that have gone through the wonderful Brockton school system and the father of a current Brockton High School student, I see firsthand every day the success stories that are happening in this city. While some people regularly lament how bad a city Brockton is, I see a different place. A school system that is one of the best in the state, topped by a high school that is, in my opinion, second to none. D.W. Field Park, a 750-acre jewel in an urban setting. 200 acres of passive recreation land in Ward 1 alone, protected from any future development by work that I did with the Conservation Commission just this last two years. State champion soccer teams, the Brockton Rocks, the Brockton Symphony, the list goes on. However, we're not a city without issues. Crime continues to plague, plague us, particularly in our inner city. We need to continue to support our undermanned police department as they continue the fight on the streets. The foreclosure crisis has affected the city of Brockton more than most other cities. The work that the city council has done in the past two years on registration of abandoned properties has helped clean up neighborhoods considerably. Ward 1 is a special place in Brockton and we have special issues to face it. I'm proud of my work representing our neighborhoods, the nicest in Brockton, from poor and densely designed development projects. Brockton needs business development, but can't afford poor decisions that have adverse long-time effects on our neighborhoods. I have led the fight on the city council to drop the commercial tax rate to a more modest percentage, which in the long run will help us to bring a, a lower residential tax rate as we attract more and better businesses to Brockton. But perhaps my proudest accomplishment is my leadership and maturity on the city council itself. While our country is held captive by a Tea Party minority and all of Washington resorts to partisan bickering, bringing government to a standstill, I've worked very hard with my colleagues on the Brockton City Council to find common ground on issues. For all of these reasons, I ask you, the people of Ward 1, to give me your vote on November 5th. I am fully vested in Brockton as a resident and business owner. I believe in Brockton and have no intentions on leaving. I am here to stay. I want to return Brockton back to the people and not to the politicians. I am not a career politician but rather I am just a resident like yourselves who wants the best for our city. Councilor Cruz, you have lost complete contact with the voters of Ward 1, and I will restore their faith in city government when I am elected as the next Ward 1 city councilor. I will have monthly ward meetings, radio and cable announcements, a callback within 24 hours, and a full open line of communication with the people of Ward 1, and represent their better interest as opposed to the insider's special interest. Unlike my opponent, I will vote against any new tax increase. And unlike my opponent, I do not have any relatives on the city payroll. I ask for your vote on November 5th, and thank you. Okay, and we have, what, a minute to wrap? Less than a minute? Okay, I want to thank you both for coming in here. 
good discussion of the issues. Um, just scratch the surface. We could easily do another half an hour, no question. I want to thank Ron Van Dam and WXBR. And uh, most importantly, November 5th is Election Day. Make sure your voice is heard and you get out and vote. And we'll have continuing coverage on both the media outlets all the way leading up to the November 5th election. Thank you for watching.